There are some situations where we want to enclose a gap in a mesh or between two separate meshes that have been combined into a single object where the normal fill operations can't do the job. In the first example, we'll create a hole in a cube by subdividing two opposite faces three times. Next, we remove the four center faces on opposite sides of the cube. The holes allow us to see within the cube. Not only are we exposing back faces, but we can also see that the walls of the cube have no thickness. To solve both these problems, we'll select the border of each newly created hole and then select Edge, Bridge Edge Loops. This creates new faces between the selected sets of edges, making the inside of the cube look solid and hiding the back faces. In fact, we can use the Bridge Edge Loops operation on our cube without deleting the faces. All we need to do is select the faces as before, skip the deleting process, and perform bridge edge loops. Blender will get rid of the original set of faces for us. Bridging works between two meshes as long as they have been joined into a single object. It also works over multiple meshes, which have been grouped into a single object. Ideally, the loops being joined should have the same number of vertices. However, bridging can be used where this is not true. Here we can see a 32 vertex circle bridged to a 4 vertex circle. Note that the geometry created will be neater if the number of vertices in one mesh is exactly divisible by the number of vertices in the second mesh. There is quite an extensive set of parameters in the last op panel. Some of these are only relevant for specific types of bridging. For example, the first parameter, Connect Loops, has various options. To demonstrate this parameter, we'll create four circles. Now, if we select all the edges in our compound object and choose Bridge Edge Loops, We'll get the result we see here with new faces leading from one circle to the next, but the final mesh is open at both ends. This result is determined by the fact that connect loops is set to open loop. If we change it to closed loop, the two ends are joined to create a manifold mesh. The final option here, loop pairs, connects pairs of circles only, giving two separate meshes within our object. To explain the next parameter, Merge, we'll use an object created from two open cylinders. After selecting a loop of edges on each cylinder, bridging creates new faces between the two meshes. However, if we check the Merge option, no new faces are created. Instead, the faces of both cylinders are extended to meet and join with each other. Merge factor adjusts to what extent each of the two cylinders is extended to create the join. A value of 0.5 will mean both are extended equally. We'll uncheck Merge, allowing the new faces to reappear. Twist creates a twist in how the new edges are joined to the existing vertices. A higher value giving more of a twisting effect. Of course, we can take things too far and create a badly formed mesh. Number of cuts adds a number of edge loops to the new faces. This can be useful if we want to go on and reshape the newly created surface. Interpolation and smoothness together adjusts the profile of the new faces in a way that is easier to observe than explain. To demonstrate, we'll start with an object containing two circles and create bridging faces. We have to add a few loop cuts. Without these, interpolation and smoothness have little effect. Interpolation has three options. Linear 
gives a straight line profile to the newly created faces. Blend Path gives a bell-shaped profile and Blend Surface returns to the straight line look. Although we've started smoothness at zero, its value can range from zero to two. If we adjust its value for each interpolation option, we'll see that the smoothness value has no effect when interpolation is set to linear. But when interpolation is set to blend path, smoothness moves the loop cuts, and this in turn changes the bridging faces profile. When set to blend surface, it only adjusts the position of the new loop cuts. Profile factor controls the degree to which the next parameter, profile shape, affects the new face's profile. In effect, larger values expand the faces outwards. Profile shape is a feature we saw in the proportional editing video and, like interpolation, smoothness, and profile factor, adjusts the overall profile of the new surface area with a selection given in the form of a drop-down menu. As a general rule, all of the last four parameters have some effect on the profile of the new faces and should be adjusted to best suit your requirements. Note that there are occasions when Blender struggles to create exactly the bridging effect we're after. This often occurs when the loops lie on the same plane. We can easily fix this by moving one of the edge loops onto a different plane, performing the bridging, and then returning the edge loop to its original position. 